Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll run through the UK Met Office run have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days as we are in a bit of a lull at the moment with drier and generally decent potentially even warm conditions for some in the south and the east but over the next sort of two three days it's on a downwards trend by the end of the weekend into Monday and Tuesday, it's looking like we're going to be going much, much colder, as we've alluded to in the last few videos, with quite a bit of precipitation around as well. Temperatures could be really struggling into the low teens, and some areas could not even get out of single digits for their highs next week, early next week, that is. As we'll have a look when we look when we see the GFS, GM, Eastern GF, and the ensembles at the medium to long range sort of the seven to ten day time frame, it looks like as we head towards the Jubilee weekends, where we have a bunch of bank holidays, it does look like there could be a recovery in temperatures. It still could stay unsettled with showers around and with recovering temperatures, warmer conditions perhaps there could be some thundery showers as well but it does definitely look like we're going to be seeing a warming trend and this sort of cool cold spell we're going to be seeing is only going to really last two or three days luckily because i know it's probably going to be pretty miserable for some especially along that east coast early next week just remember if you enjoy my videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description also do check out channel membership that link is in the description as well and you can also press the join button next to the subscribe button as it does really help me out uh, financially as well so to start on the live radar you can see most of the united kingdom is actually pretty dry now i've got a lot of showers over scandinavia into denmark poland germany a lot of precipitation there but for the uk with high pressure building in it is much, much drier. This trough that's over Scandinavia is the trough that's going to be heading our way with much cooler air and precipitation over the next sort of two or three days. But for the time being, high pressure building in from the south, meaning it's pretty decent out there, dry and warm. However, the far north of Scotland still getting a little bit of westerly winds, so seeing a few precipitation uh, bands come in, a few heavier showers there. Uh, again, scattered, but still uh, could be a little bit unsettled under these showers, but for most places, it's pretty decent. Now, if we put the temperatures as of around half one, you can see a lot of oranges there in the south, which is temperatures getting into the high teens, potentially just uh, getting towards maybe 20 degrees in a few spots. Further northwards, much cooler with more of a westerly flow, and these sort of cooler conditions are going to dissipate for a day or so before they return through Sunday afternoon into Monday and Tuesday. Quite widely, it's looking pretty unsettled indeed. So if we do now have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at what is happening with the precipitation and temperature over the next um next couple of or well, next five days or so now you can see at the moment we've got showers of course over parts of scotland those will dissipate over the evening and if we have a look at saturday you can see the wind starting to veer in from northerly but it's nothing too bad yet and you can see it's a pretty decent day quite a bit of sunshine around some cumulus clouds popping up and maybe the odd shower in the far east but nothing bad at all so saturday looks like it's gonna be a real nice day Showers start to appear a little bit towards the evening, but not too significant. Overnight, we start to see showers drifting in along that east coast as the north northeasterly wind arrives. And you can see this big massive cloud, so even snow over the higher ground in Scotland. Um, and generally, more showers drifting in by Monday. And you can see by Monday afternoon, widespread cloudy conditions, widespread scattered um, showers, some of these heavy as well. Those temperatures really will be down, and that continues into Tuesday where again a lot of cloud a lot of precipitation uh, and those temperatures will be really quite cool as well before by Wednesday starting to clear up as that low pressure does fill in we do start to see some warmer air potentially budge up from the south but it still uh, will remain on the cooler side for a day or so it's towards Thursday Friday when we start to head into those bank holidays uh, it could start to increase in temperature but we'll have a look at that on the mid to long range models in a minute so if you do look at those upper air temperatures you can see really warm in the south at the moment so that's why we're seeing temperatures into the low 20s but that cold air is going to take 
take over. And as I said, by Saturday, it's gathering just offshore um, of northeast Scotland. But by Saturday afternoon to Sunday, it moves in. Uh, you do see it does dissipate very quickly as soon as you see any sunshine on this cold air mass. It does warm up very quickly as it's well, as we're heading to the end of May, early June now. So any air mass is below zero degrees at 850 HPA do get warmed up very quickly in our latitude. But you can see around freezing or below freezing pretty much everywhere through Monday and into Tuesday still really chilly before Wednesday we start to see some warmer air potentially starting to drift up from the south as temperatures could start to be a little bit on the up as we head later into the week but it could stay unsettled with some showers around of course now if we look at the two meter temperatures you'll be able to see there is big big contrast coming up you can see today temperatures again getting into the mid high teens 18 19 degrees quite widely potentially 20 degrees in a couple spots but further north it's under the showers in scotland where we have that cold air just offshore it could remain in the mid to low teens as we head through to saturday afternoon it's going to be the best day of the weekend really um and you can see widely 18 19 20 degrees that's warmer sector shifting further southwards and westwards. So the further south and westwards you are over the next sort of five days, the better conditions you're likely to be seeing in terms of temperatures. Along that east coast, it is starting to cool down, only 11 to 14 degrees. And just you wait for Sunday, it's going to be chilling down significantly. You can see that area of sort of 18, 19 degrees has completely dissipated. We can see a few areas, maybe 15 to 17 degrees, especially over the Republic of Ireland, but widely, especially through central and east eastern areas 10 to 14 degrees and with a northeasterly breeze a lot of showers around it's going to feel chilly out there it's going to feel pretty miserable and as i said a few areas here hardly getting above single digits and that continues into monday where we see this even more widespread very little yellows which is sort of 15 degrees above showing here and quite a lot of sort of 8 to 12 degrees along that east coast in you know, northern england scotland really chilly some places uh, well, across the whole of scotland we might not see temperatures get above much much above sort of 12 or 13 degrees which is really cold for the end of may heading into the start of meteorological summer now by tuesday we start to see a little bit of recovery in temperatures in the far south and southeast as the warmer air does drift up perhaps 17 18 degrees there and by wednesday afternoon i suspect that area will grow slightly but again all depends on shower amounts one thing i do have to say is a caveat for these temperatures the general gist of temperatures could get up to sort of 14 15 degrees early next week if we see sunshine but the issue is quite a few areas are going to be stuck under cloud and precipitation and that can change over the next couple of days so if it's showing right now sort of 10 11 degrees it could potentially get up to 13 14 degrees if we see a bit of sunshine some areas are saying 13 14 15 degrees could easily be 10 or 11 degrees if we see more precipitation um, and more clouds so that is something we do need to take into account these temperatures can fluctuate they will change most likely we've just got to keep uh, an, eye, uh, an eye on it uh, but this is the general ballpark we're seeing early next week many areas not getting much above 12 or 13 degrees really chilly indeed so if we now have a look at the mid to longer range we'll have a look at the gfs gm eastern bf and the ensembles we'll be able to see this pattern evolve on the pressure level um, and we'll also have a look at the longer range as well so you can see high pressure building in at the moment and that's why we're seeing drier conditions quite widely still a bit of low pressure hanging on in the far north of scotland that's why you still have showers around but you can see those big blues and greens over scandinavia that's the trough that is heading our way and you can see by sort of sunday monday time those greens are taking over much colder upper air conditions and lower pressure giving those widespread showers now this low does eventually fill in by sort of wednesday thursday time and we see slacker winds so these temperatures will increase but still low pressure around by thursday so it could still be a few showers but it is filling in and you can see by friday afternoon high pressure firmly building in again very difficult to say exactly what the temperatures will be because again it can fluctuate very much sort of cloud amounts exactly little pockets of colder air that remain but it does look like generally through friday and saturday temperatures will increase with high pressure building back in but one thing we do need to watch in the longer term as you can see a little trough in the bay of biscay moving up from the south that could provide heavy rain thunderstorms as well mixing in with very warm air in the longer term but it doesn't look pretty decent on the gfs run with higher pressure building back in slacker winds nothing amazingly hot coming from the south but nothing amazingly cold either 
So do have a look at the 850 HP temperatures. So you can see again, cold air is filtering in over the coming days. Those greens moving in really chilly indeed. Again, look at the temperature deviation, a good four to six degrees below average. Look at the potential equivalent temperature. You can see again, very cold, these blues um, showing the air mass, um, very cold, proper arctic air mass, uh, and you see all these yellows, which is very warm air masses, are well to our south. Now, if we do move beyond that, you can see those greens eventually run out of steam um, by sort of Wednesday, Thursday time, and those temperatures start to increase. Very warm air is just to our southeast, don't quite tap into it um, for a period of time, but you can see by sort of Saturday time, warmer air is toppling over the higher pressure, turning much more pleasant under that and you can have a look at the temperature deviation you can see it's a two to four degrees by average pretty decent indeed towards day 10 and beyond that we do start to drag in some very warm air from the far south but of course that's with that upper trough which could provide some thundery activity so it does look like in the longer term it is going to be turning warmer again towards average maybe above average but we will be seeing continued precipitation with low pressure troughs still in and about we're not stuck directly under a high pressure system which is what we'd need to just see bone dry conditions so we do now have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure building in, low pressure coming in off uh, the North Sea, very chilly conditions there, and then eventually we see high pressure topple in for um, in around a week's time next sort of Saturday time. And then we do see, yeah, generally decent conditions uh, in around day 10, uh, or in 10 days time, but still that little off the trough just to our south which could again give heavy showers and storm activity again looking at the upper air temperatures you can see chilly over the next few days into early next week before temperatures do recover under that higher pressure turning things a little bit warmer and you can see very hot air mass just to our south we could start tapping into this 20 degree ice firm it is just to our south at day 10 so all we need is a bit of a southerly flow and we would tap into some very hot air and that would get us well into the 30 degree range if we did pull in that sort of air mass but that is something well in the future, two weeks away. So we'll have a look at that well near at the time if it does continue to stay in the output. If we do finish by having a look at the ECM WF, uh, again, high pressure building northwards, low pressure gathering out the North Sea, moving through much colder air mass. And then eventually we do see high pressure topple in for the weekend, but still this upper trough nearby giving us showers and storm activity before right to the end of the run. Low pressure just to our south, high pressure at the top, a bit of an easterly flow, but a warm easterly flow coming in from a southeasterly direction. Now if we do look at the upper air tem temperatures, you can see again, chilly uh, conditions coming in over the next few days and then warmer conditions start to return again and right towards the end of the run very hot conditions just towards the near continents we are seeing this can signal around day 10 very hot air is going to be returning towards central and northern europe whether it reaches the uk that's yet to be determined we can see all these runs are starting to push a real hot air mass as a result of low pressure sitting out just off the coast of portugal in the bay of biscay um, pushing that very hot air up from the south towards sort of central northwest europe but as I said, whether we tap into it in the UK is uncertain because you look at the temperature deviation shows it much better. You can see 12 degrees above average across France, but towards the UK, only four to six degrees above average, uh, maybe even less than that in the northern parts. So it just depends if we do tap into this very hot air. So we do finish by having a look at the ensembles. If we do start on the 850 HPA temperature and precipitation, you can see very cold trend over the next sort of three, four, five days, getting well below freezing at 850 HPA, a good five to seven degrees below average. By around the 1st, 2nd of June, as we head into the Jubilee weekend, the temperature do recover to around average, some of it much above average, and you see the operational GFS has it well above average as well, some returning below average, but generally the ensemble's around average. Not real uh, any real trends at this stage, we'll have to get through these colder spell, see how that low pressure does evolve, uh, and that depends on how quickly a warmer air mass does move in, but it does look like it will at least return towards average for that Jubilee weekend. But, as I said, precipitation is still reasonably high. No massive spikes, so no big weather fronts by any means, but could be a lot of little occluded fronts, little systems, areas of showers, thundery activity in the way of convection. This is sort of a typical showery chart. You see a little spike every single day, just showing 
when that sun gets going, we could be seeing quite frequent convection. So not bone dry, not a complete washout at this stage um, for sort of uh, well, beyond the next sort of few days. Uh, but it does look like there will be plenty of showers around. If you do look at the two meter temperatures, you can see abysmal next week, sort of 12 to 14 degrees for a couple of days on sort of Monday, Tuesday, and even Sunday's only going to be 15 degrees and Wednesday likely again only 14, 15 degrees. But beyond that, returns again to high teens, maybe low 20s, getting towards that 18 to 20 degree range. And that's consistent signal for the foreseeable future. But again, still quite a bit of precipitation around. If you do have a look at the ECM, the F ensemble is very similar, very cold over the next sort of five days, returning to around average and staying around or slightly above average for the foreseeable future. Again, increased precipitation signal for that 2nd of June spell. When that warm air does engage, we could see some bigger showers and more persistent rain there. You can see a bit of a collecting of rain spikes there. So that's something we do need to keep an eye on. 2nd of June is a bank holiday. Um, so could that at Thursday could not be particularly pleasant. Still, though, six days away. So things can change, but we just got to keep an eye on it. And again, if we look at the two meter temperatures, just to finish the video, really cold early next week. Monday, Tuesday, hardly getting up off sort of 12, 13 degrees. And beyond that, returns again to high teens, low 20s. Back towards sort of 18 to 20 degree range for the uh, bank holiday weekend. Perhaps Thursday, not so great. Friday, recovering a bit better. By Saturday, Sunday, next weekend, the signal is for warmer conditions again but still could be showers around and that looks like the signal for the foreseeable future again we have to keep an eye on the longer term could be some very hot conditions coming or we could see a return to cooler conditions but um, at this stage there's no real big trend so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed um, and i'll see you again for another video soon